Hey guys, Marianne here with Shopping Crafty, and welcome to another installment of the Financial Freedom Book Club. Um, uh, as you know, this was a collab started by Long Term Lottery. Every month, uh, the last Wednesday of the month, we review a book. So this month it was Switch, How to Change Things When Change is Hard by Chip Heath and Dan Heath. I was a little disappointed when I started reading it because it is not a financial book and I wanted to read a financial book. This is pretty much just like a self-help book, a book about motivating yourself and others. I feel like it's almost more targeted toward businesses that are trying to make changes than individuals too. So it was a little removed from what I was looking for from the book club, but I still wanted to read it just to see if I would get anything out of it. And I didn't not get anything out of it. I just, it was, it was a book that had some interesting information. So the big thing in this book, Switch, it's a big metaphor throughout the book. It is about somebody riding an elephant on a path. And the way to make change is basically manipulating all three of those elements, the rider, the elephant, and the path. So you have to direct the rider, motivate the elephant, and shape the path. So the idea is the rider is the logical person. It's the person who knows what you need to do, knows how to do it. But the elephant is the emotional side of you. Your brain knows you should work out five times a week. The emotional self says, I'm tired. I don't feel like it today. So you have to motivate the elephant to do what the writer logically knows it should do. And thirdly, you have to shape the path. Because even if the writer knows what you're supposed to do and the elephant emotionally wants to do it, if the path is blocked, if the path isn't clear, you may be unsuccessful in your journey. You have to have the roadmap. All of those things are pretty interesting and I think I will, without realizing it, use that logic in my head for future decisions. So I guess it was helpful that way. But overall, this book, eh, it was, it was okay. It was interesting. I did find one portion of it really interesting. It was talking about designated drivers and sorry my roommate's walking by I was talking about designated drivers and how apparently before 1991 that was not a concept in the US it was not a part of the culture it was part of other cultures in other countries but the US it was not a thing to have somebody set aside to give people rides home after a night of drinking and the way they chose to make that a part of American culture wasn't through active campaigns for it or anything like that. They tried to make it seem like it was part of the culture already by putting it on TV shows. I thought that was so interesting. And they didn't have like after school specials about the importance of a designated driver. They had a policy of just five seconds in an episode, reference it as if it's already a thing just five seconds. You don't need to do anything more than that. Apparently there was just a poster of it on Cheers of, do you have your designated driver to drive you home in the bar in Cheers? Simple as that. Just a reference to, oh, my designated driver is here when a character was drunk on a show. They normalized it. They made it act like it was already a thing. I thought that was really interesting to learn. And yeah, there were a bunch of interesting example stories in here. So just for the fact, just for that fact, it's interesting. So, I don't know if I recommend it, unless all of that sounds really interesting to you. It just wasn't my cup of tea, overall. But I do think that designated driver story was worth it, because I'm, obviously, I'm in the film industry, so things like that make me really excited, to, because 
I feel like some people look at film studies as an invalid career choice. No, film is a huge factor in our culture. It's an important knowledge source. It's it's really important. It's really important, okay? <laughs> I've had to argue for my film degree with family members, so it's just, it's valid. Try studying almost any career path without watching video content in a class. Every single major in college, I bet you watch at least one video at some point. Whether it's informative, whether it's fictional, whatever it is, media, film, TV, it's, it matters. It's important and it shapes culture as showcased in this book. That is a complete tangent though. So anyway, thanks again, Long Term Lottery, for inviting me. And the links to the other collaborators is below. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.